Hello folks, Jason Chrisman, JC's Bees, the Central Ohio Beekeeper. In today's video, we're going to have a Hive Alive giveaway, $150 value. We're going to discuss what I noticed here in Central Ohio with the eclipse. Now, I'm not in an area with totality, but I am very close. And I'm going to share with you what I observed my bees doing. And before we get to that, I want to share some pretty exciting news. Um, for the last year and a half, I've been working to put together my very first beekeeping book. And we're getting really close. Matter of fact, on May 5th, we're going to release a digital copy of the book. And I haven't even announced the title of the book, so I'm going to go ahead and do that. And you're probably going to be surprised. The book is called Beekeeping Blueprint. Didn't see that coming, did you? Um, as you all know, I've been working to put together a community called Beekeeping Blueprint. And just a couple weeks ago, I told you that the book and the community went hand in hand. Well, now you can see how that all comes into play. For anybody that's interested in reading this digital copy, we'd like to send it to you in return for an honest review on Amazon once the book is published. So the way this will work is on May 5th, if you sign up, um, we'll send you a copy of the book. You'll read it over. When the book becomes published and then goes back on Amazon, um, that's where you'll fall into place. We'll need you to go over and leave your feedback on the book. Now, if this is something you think you can uh, conquer um, and you're excited to read the book, this is an awesome early chance to do so. So, what I'm going to do is leave a link down below. I'll pin it to the very top comment box. You can go right there, click that. It'll take you over to a place where you can leave your email. And on May 5th, we'll send you a digital copy of the book. Now, a digital copy, you might be asking, what is a digital copy? That means you need a device to read it on, whether it be your phone, your computer, your tablet. This is a PDF, a digital copy of the book. So I'm very excited about this opportunity, and I hope you are too, folks. This is your chance to get a free digital copy of the book and return for a review. Nothing super hard, right? So go down, sign up, and uh, May 5th, folks. May 5th. Okay, so the Hive Alive giveaway. $149 value. Let's discuss what's included, and then I'll tell you how to enter. You're going to get a Hive Alive t-shirt. You're going to get a 100 milliliter Hive Alive liquid supplement. This is something you would add to your sugar syrup when you feed your bees. You're going to get 10 one pound Hive Alive 15% pollen patties. You're going to get 6 2.2 pound Hive Alive fondant patties. Okay, so the liquid syrup additive, the supplement, great, great product. I use that in the summer months when there's a Darth and uh, not only do my bees like it, it helps keep them healthy. As for the pollen patties, well, let's talk a little bit about these bad boys. The Hive Alive fondant patties are made with 15% real pollen. Let me break that down for you a little bit. Hive Alive pollen patties are manufactured by Global Pollen Patties using their 15% formulation, while also adding concentrates of Hive Alive with a unique blend of seaweed extract for added nutrition. It's a great product, folks. Um, if you're not aware of Global Patties, it's worth taking time to do a little bit of research on them, and you'll see they make great products. Now, the 15%, that means it has 15% real pollen that's harvested by bees and then they've used pollen traps to gather it and then they turn it back into pollen patties so great great product the fondant patties can't say enough about them in, in late fall early winter and over winter my bees love them and i personally have the hive alive t-shirt and i love it great products hive alive makes so to enter all you need to do is go down in the comments section and type Hive Alive. And if you're going to comment any more than that, all I ask is that you put Hive Alive at the beginning and not at the end of your statement. It'll make it a lot easier for me if I can go down through the comments and read Hive Alive first, and then anything else you may want to comment or ask questions on, put that afterwards. That would be greatly appreciated, and uh, you won't be skipped out on that way because I will be looking for it to be first Hive Alive and that's all you have to put and then on April 20th I'm going to use software to go through the comments and choose three people 
and then I'm going to reply to you on the comment of this video with my email and ask you to email me. From there we will work out the details and Hive Alive will send you the products. It's a win-win really. All you have to do is go down and type Hive Alive and wait till April 20th. Pretty easy, huh? Your bees will be happy, I'm telling you. Okay, so now let's discuss the eclipse and what I noticed with my bees. Let me start off by saying, you know, months ago when the media brought this eclipse to our attention, I was excited about it. And then day after day of hearing it on the news and on the radio, I was over it, you know. And then the opportunity came the other day, and, and I had the opportunity to go out and watch the bees. Um, my wife hadn't left for work yet, so we had time to sit out there together, observe the bees, and see how they reacted and spend time together. So um, after taking time to do so and realizing what was going on, I'm glad uh, that I did take that opportunity. There was something very unique um, about sitting there and with your glasses on and watching the moon slowly cover the sun and the wildlife getting quieter, the birds, um, slowly getting darker. Uh, it just made you feel rather small and appreciative to be able to witness such a thing. So anyway, um, I don't know. It was interesting, and I'm glad I took time to uh, to sit out there and observe everything that was going on around me. Before I say too much, check out this little montage I put together. Um, and before I let you watch it, I do want to point out that my my cell phone camera didn't actually pick up on the darkness for some reason. Even though we didn't get completely dark, it was dusk here, and um, for some reason the camera just didn't justify that darkness. It looked like it was the middle of the day with the sun blasting still. So anyway, you can obviously see though that the bees responded and I think maybe that will give it some perspective, but it doesn't look like it got any darker really from the beginning to the end. And I think that's just because of uh, today's technology with these cameras. Anyway, check this out. I want to know what you think. At this point in the eclipse, the moon is just starting to creep over the sun. So it's very early stages. But we should have a good partial eclipse and I'm anxious to see what we observe. Desperately need to get this hive split. Stan, Stan, Stan. You're a strong, strong man, Stan. Okay, we'll tune back in. in a little bit. Okay, so it's now about 2.35 and about 3.15 is when I imagine we're going to be at our darkest point. And to be honest with you, I don't see nearly the amount of bees flying around I did a few minutes ago. So we'll check back in another 15, 20 minutes and uh, see what's going on with the hives then. I'm also anxious to see if the chickens start heading in for bed, which uh, I'm figuring from the last partial eclipse we had in my area in 2017, that's what's gonna happen. It's now about 10 till three. We got about 20, 25 minutes and uh, we'll be at our darkest point for my location. Now, like I said, I'm not in totality Traffic has definitely slowed down. It'd be interesting to see if it picks back up to what it was before uh, the coverage started. We'll check it out here in another 25 minutes, see what's going on. So in the next 10, 15 minutes, we're gonna be at our darkest point. You can still see a lot of bees coming in. As for my chickens, not the first ones headed for the coop yet. Stanley, you're a very healthy boy. Check back in about 10 minutes, see what's going on. It looks a lot darker here in real life than it does on the camera, but so far, not a single chicken has headed for the coop. Not one. 
So what I've noticed is besides this really weird dark lighting, and it's really not picking up on camera, is the temperature's dropped a good 10 degrees. And look, the bees are starting to beard. Now, after the moon starts to move, it'd be interesting to see if these bees that are down here on the bottom take flight and go out and work again. Boy, the, I cannot believe how much lighter it looks on camera compared to here in real life. Lots of bees coming in. Can't deny that. Lots of bees coming in. Um, you know, we're at our darkest point, and I gotta say, activity has greatly reduced. There's still a, f a few filled bees coming in, but look at the front of that colony. You can see all of that blue box now. There's not any bees walking around on it. Um, the top box, there's a very few, and they're hanging around the entrance. Down at the bottom, we've got some bearding, and I'll tell you, as I sit here, one thing I can notice immediately is the smell of the nasonove gland. And that's a gland that's on the bee's butt. And they open this little gland and secrete this scent, which helps keep the bees together and tells them where home is. So as they get in the general vicinity, they're able to tell exactly where to go. And it's often used when they swarm. Um, I don't see any signs of swarming here, although they're going to if Mr. Jason doesn't get in there and make splits here in the next few days. Um, but I thought it was interesting that I could smell that. Um, other observations, the temperature got a lot cooler. I'm going to say 8 to 10 degrees cooler. It got really quiet. You know, the birds kind of hushed up. The chickens were still making noise in the background. But uh, all the wildlife kind of went hush. It was interesting and I'm interested to see if these bees down here take flight as the sun comes back out and you know you look at it here it doesn't look like it's covered at all by the moon and that's just because it's cloudy so what you're seeing is the sun highlight the clouds in front of it but we'll see we'll come back out in an hour or so and see if these bees are have taken flight and if the front of this hive is covered again Ought to be an interesting observation. But for now, let me step over here to the side and show you the traffic. It has greatly, greatly reduced. It's about 323 right now in the afternoon. And we're working back towards the light. Okay, an hour's passed. And it looks like the activity has picked up. Still got the little cluster of bees underneath the not nearly the activity we had earlier but it's definitely picked up some from during the eclipse and the beard may have even gotten a little smaller look at it here yeah it's significantly smaller Very interesting. It's definitely warmed back up. The birds are singing. The bees are flying, bringing in pollen. And the chickens are still out free ranging. So there you go. I think it was weird that the chickens didn't respond. And my past experience with the partial uh, eclipse we had back in 2017, I had a different reaction. But I think I might know why that is. At the time, I had chickens in a mobile coop at our lease farm. And I moved it like every four or five days to a different part of the pasture or a different pasture. And at that time, the chickens were on one side of a tree line. And that tree line actually gave them early shade from afternoon sun. And that may have added a little bit extra darkness to the area when we had our partial eclipse 
and maybe that's why the chickens responded differently that time versus this time. As where this time my chicken coop is not portable, it's stationary, and it actually gets evening sun, so it's late before my chickens go into the coop. So it's a little bit different setup, the chickens are on a little bit different mindset, and I'm not sure if that's the correct way to think about it, but that's my thinking on why they responded the way they did. As for the bees, I thought it was interesting that as more sun became available, more bees started to go out and work. It was like the sun coming up first thing in the morning. And eventually, that beard on the bottom of the hive was gone. And pollen was coming in like crazy. So, very interesting. And I'm glad I took time to do so. So, if you got to experience the eclipse, I would love to hear um, what you noticed. Okay, so before I let you go, I want to mention um, one more time my beekeeping blueprint community. As I mentioned earlier, this kind of goes along with my book. And what it is is a community for beekeepers to all come together, share information, help each other out, help each other learn. Over there we have the capacity to share pictures with each other, videos with each other, ask questions with pictures and video, um, chat one-on-one, -on -one, and I'll also be having, before long, my monthly roundtable talks, which will be like a big Zoom meeting, and if you're interested, You'll be invited, you could come on, you can tell us about your bees, maybe the problems you're having, or maybe your goals with your bees. And we can all get to know each other a little bit. Um, as for the round table though, I haven't quite narrowed down a date, but there is a great group of people building over there right now. You know, I was pretty excited to see this week, um, I was busy on the farm and, and doing all these little projects to get ready for this video. So, um, I had a couple of beekeepers ask questions at different times on the beekeeping blueprint community this week and I wasn't able to respond immediately because I was tied up and what was very awesome to see and encouraging that I'm doing the right thing with this community is to see other beekeepers offer advice um, offer information from other websites and uh, all come together to help solve a problem and that happened a couple times and then, you know, later on, I was obviously, I had some time and I was able to chime in and, and share my two cents. But it was just, uh, it was very awesome and uh, I loved it. So, the more people we get over there, the stronger it's going to get and the better it's going to get. So, I'd love to see you over there and you can get in right now for a one-time fee of the price of a cup of coffee. And all you need to do is follow the link down below or I'll pull up a QR code here and use my coupon code, Jason. So, pretty simple to get in, and for the price of a coffee. One-time fee. When my book becomes published, this will be going monthly, and it'll be $9 a month. So, now is your chance to get in for a, a greatly reduced cost, and what's five bucks, folks? What's a cup of coffee? I mean, really. Um, come on over, folks. Love to see you there. Anyway, I'm going to sign out for now, and we'll see you next week, folks. Hope you enjoyed this video. Have any questions or comments, leave them down below. Remember, hive alive first, then the question or comment. Thanks. Much appreciated. If you enjoyed the video, smash that thumbs up button. And if you haven't taken time to subscribe, please do so. Thanks, folks. We'll see you next week. And uh, for anybody that wants to help in this book and do a review, I appreciate you. Thanks again.